Hi, so for today we are going to continue our discussion all about the 1001 Solve Integrals. This will be the part 10 of our 1001 Solve Integrals. So we have numbers 71 to 75. So let's get started with our integral. So for number 71, we have solved the integral of 4e raised to 3ln of x dx. So uh, the very first thing that we're going to do here with this integral is that uh, we need to observe that the inside integral has an exponential function and a natural logarithm function. So, uh, we can simplify furthermore whenever we have an exponential function and a natural logarithm function. So, first we have integral of 4e raised to 3 ln of x. So, what are we going to do is that actually by properties of natural logarithm, we can rewrite this as 3 ln x we can rewrite this as x cube ln of x cube so whatever the constant value here we can uh, make it as the exponent of whatever is inside the ln which is in this case x so we have uh, now ln x cube dx in differential equation, whenever we see e raised to ln, let's say of x, this is cancelled and the answer is simplified as simply x. But I'm going to show you how. So, in this case, we have to let you the ln of e raised to ln of x cubed. We're not going to use u substitution here, but I'm just going to, 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 to prove you the proof that e raised to ln of x cubed is simply equal to x cubed. Okay? So, if we let you uh, e raised to ln of x cubed, we try to ln both sides. ln both sides, whatever you do on the left, you will also do on the right. ln of e raised to ln of x cubed. Okay? So, this is what happens. Okay, and by by properties of ln and e, if whenever we see ln multiplied by ln of the exponential, that is simply equal to 1. So what happens is that we have ln of u, then ln of e equals 1. Okay, and whatever is the, is the uh, uh, exponent of the e, that becomes uh, the term. So, that would be equal to ln of x cubed. So, that if we are going to carefully look at this, ln, ln is u equals simply x cubed. So, we can now rewrite that this is simply the integral of 4 e raised to ln x cubed, as I have said, is simply equal to x cubed. So, this would be 4, integral of 4 x cubed dx. So, that's how we can simplify this. So, how do we solve this? This is very simple. So, we have 4 integral of x cubed dx. That's power rule. So, we have x raised to 4 all over 4 plus c. 4 will cancel. So, we have x raised to 4 plus c as our answer for the problem 71. How about first problem 72? So, we have the integral of ln e. So, you may have an idea already. So, we have to cancel ln of e that's equal to 1. Whenever we see this, that would be whatever is the exponent of the e. That would be the answer. That would be the simplification. So, we have integral of 2x dx. Okay? So, that is very simple. Okay, again... In order for us to solve this, as I have said, okay, a while ago, that in ln e raised to 2x, by properties of natural logarithm, we can have it here, okay? So, we have 2x ln of e, and ln of e equals 1, okay? So, that we have 2x dx. The same process that we did here, okay? The same process that we did here, we have ln of u, 
And then we have ln of e, ln of x cubed. So by properties of natural algorithm, I can rewrite the right side of the equation. This is the exponent. So I can have it here ln of x cubed multiplied by ln of e. It so happened that ln of e equals 1. So we now have ln of u and then ln of x cubed. So it cancels. Therefore, u equals x cubed. Okay? So that is why we did that. So the same process that we did here by properties of natural logarithm. So we have 2 integral of x dx. That's very simple. We have 2 x squared all over 2 plus c cancel. We have x squared plus c. So a simple uh, integral like this may look like com be it's, being it's, it's complicated, but it's not. Okay? So you, we just have to be mindful of the properties of natural logarithm and the ln of e equals 1. Okay? So for number 73, we have hyperbolic sign. Hyperbolic sign of 2x dx. Okay, there are two ways to solve this. First, use substitution and another one is using the Euler's formula. So, we know that by definition of the hyperbolic sine of x, that is e raised to x minus e raised to negative x all over 2. So, we're going to substitute it. But since the, the angle here is x, it means also that hyperbolic sine of 2x would be e raised to 2x minus e raised to negative 2x all over 2. So, we're going to substitute it. So, we have e raised to 2x minus e raised to negative 2x all over 2 and then dx. So, by properties of integral, we can isolate this two. Okay. So, we can factor out the outside of the integral. One half. Then, we have this. Same as this. The only difference is that they have what? Different signs in the exponent. This is a positive 2x and this is a negative 2x. So, we can now solve. Okay. So, using u substitution, okay, this is 2x, this is negative 2x. So, we are going to let u as 2x du equals 2dx, but we only have dx here. So, du all over 2 equals dx. How about here? We're going to let u negative 2x, du is negative 2dx, but I also have dx here. So, ne this is negative du all over 2 equals dx. So, by we can now use u substitution. We have e raised to u. Our dx here is du all over 2 minus 1 half. We have e raised to u. Our dx here is negative du all over 2. Factor out 1 half. This becomes 1 fourth. This also becomes 1 fourth because of the 1 half here. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. e raised to. Of course, I can also factor out the negative. So, negative times negative would be positive here. D. So, integrate. So, we have 1 fourth e raised to u plus 1 fourth e raised to u. So, we cannot uh, simplify this because the u's here are different. This is 2x and this is negative. This is 2x, this is negative 2x. So, we bring back the original variable 1 fourth e 2x plus 1 fourth e raised to negative 2x plus c. Okay? So, if I'm going to factor out 1 half, 1 half, and then I have 1 half e raised to 2x plus 1 fourth. A uh, 1 half also here. One half e raised to negative 2x plus c. So that would be I can also rewrite this as simply e raised to 2x plus e raised to negative 2x all over 2. Okay, because they have the same denominator 2. Okay. So, e raised to 2x plus e raised to negative 2x all over 2 corresponds to the hyperbolic cosine of 2x by Euler's formula. So, we have 1 half hyperbolic cosine of 2x plus c. So, this would be the answer. This can be the answer. Or, we can use simply the u substitution. Another method or in hyperbolic 2x dx... So, we have let u equals 2x, the du is 2dx. So, we have du all over 2 equals dx because we only have dx here. Because this can be easily solved. Integral of hyperbolic 
sine equals hyperbolic cosine. Okay? So, plus C. But then, we can now make this as integral of hyperbolic sine of u. Then, we have dx is du all over 2. So, we have 1 half integral of hyperbolic sine of u du and integral of hyperbolic sine of u would be hyperbolic cosine of u plus c. But, take note that u is equal to 2x. So, we have 1 half hyperbolic cosine of 2x plus c. So, the same answer. Okay, whether we use the Euler's formula or the simple u substitution. Okay? So, what happened that we are in the discussion of the natural logarithm and the exponential. So, I've shown you the other way on how you are going to solve this. For number 74, we have the integral of the hyperbolic tangent of u d. Okay. So, what are we going to do is, we have an identity, the hyperbolic tangent, equals sine, hyperbolic sine of u all over hyperbolic cosine of u. So, just as like, in the trigonometric function, it has identity also. So, we can rewrite this as hyperbolic sine of u all over hyperbolic cosine of u and then we have du. And again, by definition, hyperbolic sine of u in exponential, so we have uh, e raised to u minus e raised to negative u all over 2 and then hyperbolic cosine of u would be e raised to u my plus e raised to negative u all over 2. So we are going to substitute that. So that we have e raised to u minus e raised to negative u all over 2. All over we have e raised to u plus e raised to negative u all over u 2. And then we have the du. Okay, so we can also rewrite this as we have 1 half e raised to u minus e raised to negative u all over 1 half e raised to u plus e raised to negative u. Then we have du. So since we have a variable that is u, we can use another variable for the u substitution. And le let's call it as v. Okay? So we let v, this is u substitution. Okay? I, I use other variables because... Uh, the the variable in our example is already u, so I used v, but this is u substitution. So if we let v equals one half e raised to u plus e raised to negative u, if we get the derivative of that, so we have dv. Okay, of course we have one half e u minus one half e raised to negative u du. Of course, if we are going to uh, uh, distribute okay and if we are going to factor it again we have one half eu minus one half raised to negative u. of which in the in the numerator present is one half e raised to u minus e raised to negative u du so why did this become negative when we get the derivative why this plus sign becomes negative because Getting the derivative of this with respect to u would yield to a negative. Negative e raised to negative u. Because the derivative of negative u is negative 1. So that we have negative in here. So this becomes negative or minus. So it's a simple uh, substitution. If we're going to substitute it, guys. So we have the integral of what is this? Okay, 1 half e raised to u minus e raised to u du. That is the dv. And what is this? We let this as our v. So that would be ln of the absolute value of v plus c. But take note that v equals 1 half e raised to u plus e raised to negative u. So we have the ln of the 1 half e raised to u plus e raised to negative u plus c. We are not yet done. We can rewrite this as... We have e raised to u plus e raised to negative u all over 2. And again, e raised to u plus e raised to negative u all over 2, it's actually hyperbolic cosine. So we have ln of the hyperbolic cosine of u plus c. So this will be our answer for this given problem. 
I think it does not have any uh, absolute value, I think. Okay, in terms of hyperbolic. In terms of the LN in hyperbolic. But uh, I'll just keep it as it is. Okay. So, number 75, we have sine 3 theta. Hy uh, this is sine 3 theta. This is ordinary trigonometric uh, function. Sine 3 theta d theta. So, we know that the integral of sine of theta, t theta, would be what? Negative cosine theta plus c. Okay? So, that is negative cosine if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, we cannot simply uh, integrate this. We let u substitution. We are going to let u equals 3 theta. Then we have du equals 3t theta. Integrate, uh, differentiate with respect to theta. So we have 3t theta. And we have theta here. So we have du all over 3 equals t theta. So u substitution. So we have the integral of sine 3 theta. That is our u. Our t theta is du all over 3. Then we can factor out one third outside of the integral sign. And then we have integrate sine of u then we have du. So that's one third integral of sine of u. That's negative cosine of u plus c. So you have negative one third cosine of u plus c. But bringing back to its original variable, the u, u equals what? 3 theta. So we have 3 theta plus c. So that, that is the answer. Negative one third cosine 3 theta plus c. So, I hope you learned something from this video, especially the LN and the hyperbolic uh, functions techniques in integrating uh, this um, hyperbolic functions. So, thank you so much, guys, for listening. Again, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to those who are having or struggling with their mathematics subjects, especially in integrals. So, thank you so much, guys, for listening. Again, this is Engineer Abad. See you again on the next video.